Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about uh, naming convention for your workflow statuses. Now, when it comes to using Jira, in the beginning, especially when people are, are, are looking for a new tool, or maybe they are rolling out Jira, they basically want uh, to configure things, which is obviously great because you can do that with Jira. Now, workflow is actually the core of uh, everything that you want to do in Jira around your processes because workflow will dictate how your issues will uh, go from one status, one status to another status, but basically the life cycle. Like when you create a new issue, what will be the first state then of course when you start working on the issue it will move to a different state and so on now th this is useful because uh, this process or this workflow is actually a reflection of your process uh, and uh, based on this you can report based on this you can uh, do some tracking of where you are and this is good i mean i, I quite like this concept although you can always uh, mess it up and uh, let me give you one very simple example. So this is, of course, uh, a place in Jira where you can create a new workflow. Like you need to be, of course, administ administrator. You need to be Jira admin. And when you create a new workflow, I'll probably not create a new workflow. I'll probably just modify or just let me just show you one of the workflow because we don't need to look at the workflow itself. We just need to look at uh, the states. Now, you have basically in this workflow different uh, states connected to each other using uh, these uh, arrows and these arrows are nothing but transitions, right? Now, when you add a new transition or I should say when you add a new status, you can actually add a new status with a lot of names. And in my case, in my Jira instance, and especially if you look at this workflow, so here it says uh, to do, then in review by legal, then with other party, resolve and cancel. So this workflow is something which I believe can be optimized further or maybe we can make some changes. So basically what I'm saying here is that whenever you are naming your statuses, don't really name your statuses that are too specific. For example, in review by legal can, e can easily be in review. That is it. Because you don't really need to know by looking at the status which team is working on it so it says in review by legal now in review by legal is uh, a nice state to have because uh, then of course when you're writing your jql or whatever you know pie chart or filter you can see okay i have this uh, status called in review by legal and it means that this is being reviewed by legal so i'm not really saying don't do it i'm saying that just look at your jira instance as a whole because multiple teams would be using Jira and they all will be using workflows. And whenever you create a new status, just look at the current list first. For example, I'm more inclined towards using just in review, not really in review by legal. And there is a way to figure out, let us say in your process, let us say there is a team who is doing maybe marketing, or maybe there is a team who is, uh, let, let me give you a very simple example based on, of course, my experience. Whenever you have onboarding for a new employee, you basically want to do a lot of things. Like whenever an, a new employee joins in, or even before they join in, you, want, you may want to send them contracts or whatever, right? So whenever you send them any contract, you may want someone from the legal team to review it, right? So in that case, it might make sense. You will think that, yes, it will make sense if we use this status called in review by legal. But a better way would be to create a task for the legal team in their project, right? And uh, what you can do is, uh, of course, uh, whenever you are working on the onboarding activities, don't really try to do everything in just one issue. Although you can, if multiple teams are involved, it is always a good idea to just uh, create a task for them, like a separate task so that you can track it. Because tracking will become very difficult if you are using the same issue. Uh, of course, you can assign it to a relevant person from a relevant team. But 
the moment you change the status, you have the history, like who did what, but that history is in the history. And it is not very easy in Jira. It has never been easy to report on historical data or basically what happened to that issue in the past. Although you can, I mean, there are some ways, but it is not straightforward. It is not really always easy. What you can do is, let us say you create an epic and uh, in that epic, you want to do 10 activities. And out of those 10 activities, three of those activities are probably for HR, another three for maybe legal team. And then of course, uh, for the accounts team or maybe someone for someone from the IT team to create uh, their accounts and pr provision the usernames and issue a laptop, something like that. So just dispatch the work. So use Jira to dispatch the work for the right team or right uh, person in their own project. So this way you can of course still crack because you are looking at the epic and you can look at what what all activities are done or not done. You can always create a, you can also create a subtask, which is also fine. It might work, but usually subtask, I mean not usually, but subtasks are within the same project, within the same issue. So in this case, whenever you're creating a new status, uh, just look at the list first and first ask yourself, do we really need to create a status that says uh, um, another in progress? I mean, it's a stupid name, right? <laughs> and uh, approved is fine, authorized, approved, they're awaiting approval. So awaiting approval might make sense, but uh, the, the, the state should not be, um, as I just mentioned, it, it, it should always be something that you can reuse. So if you are using a status like in review by legal, then you can't really reuse, reuse the state. I mean, I'm saying these things because uh, these things might not seem like uh, a lot, but if you keep these things in your mind from the very beginning of your Jira deployment, then you will get into trouble later on because after a few years or, I mean, I'm sure if you're using a tool like Jira, you are, of course, trying to solve your current problems, but you don't really want to create more problems after six months. And that is why I say that if you're not sure in the beginning, get a consultant and those consultants should not be Jira admins because Jira admins will only talk about okay we need we need to create a new workflow okay let me create a new workflow with these ten different statuses so always push back if you are a Jira admin if you are a good Jira admin and you want to become or you want to get, get into consultation then uh, don't really look at the tool look at uh, the problems you are solving look at uh, how Jira will be used and be in control be in charge don't be afraid to say no, that this is not really the right status. I, and of course, don't be rigid. Sometimes, to be honest, uh, you, I mean, you have to find a balance between uh, too much, too many configurations and solving a problem. Sometimes you have to maybe create too many configurations because uh, you have to solve a problem and that problem can only, only be solved when you do some things that are not really uh, best practices. To be honest, there is nothing like best practice, as, I, as I've always mentioned. It is all about uh, what works for you. So in this video, I just wanted to give you an idea, like when it comes to statuses in Jira, think about naming your statuses. Keep it generic if you can. All right, that is it. I hope you have, I hope you have learned something new in this video and uh, you also enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.